of course, we're making through these, uh, uh, these epistles um, of Jesus Christ. He's the one, of course, that um, is giving us the information. He's the one that, that, are, uh, that, of course, is addressing each one of these seven churches. And um, as we go through here and as we look, we've already looked at the church of Ephesus. Of course, then we looked at the church that faced martyrdom, and that was uh, the church of Smyrna. And now here we are at the church of Pergamos. And um, I do want to say this right here, that, that this is going to be important for today's session, that you remember that what's beautiful about this is the prophetic nature of these seven churches. That it creates a timeline of the church age all the way from the time that the church, the, the, the conception of the church, way back at Pentecost in that upper room, all the way through until now, here we are, um, 2022, and it creates a perfect, I mean, you can, you can diagram it by the year, all the way down to the year of, of whenever one church age uh, ends and the other begins. And, of course, the, the, the church of Ephesus, if you remember I told you, that was, that was those early years. That was at the very, very uh, uh, infancy of the church. And that was, of course, right around, we want to say right around 33 A.D. all the way to right around 100 A.D. So really, whenever John was writing in 90, right around 95 A.D., he was writing during what we would consider the prophetic timeline of the church of Ephesus. Well then, after that, because of the persecution that was coming down from Rome, we entered into another whole church era. And that was the era of, of, of persecution, martyrdom, death. And they went in to the church of Smyrna. And if you remember what I told you, whenever we covered Smyrna, it was ten, because Jesus even told us that, 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 that he, he said he, he gave the actual word about how it would last 10 days. And that corresponded with 10 Roman emperors. Um, and then as you went through that, and then after that 10th emperor, things changed. And we're going to see this here today. Things changed, and that went in, of course, to, to the timeline, the time era of Pergamos. So really, if you're thinking about the prophetic timeline, that's along the lines of about 312 A.D. But that's looking at it from a prophetic standpoint. Remember, all seven of these churches existed at that time that John was writing this. So it was applied to those local churches. And not only just those seven churches, but all churches. And it's still applicable to today as we look at it, it. It applies here to Friendly Chapel. And then it also applies to us individually. Okay, But as we go through today especially, we're going to really look at it prophetically because it's, it's going to be remarkable. And like I said, if this would have been organized in any other way, it would not have worked. It's amazing at what and how that and people argue against it. So there's no way that that tells you know that they want to point out this inaccuracy and this and that or whatever. But there's no way that it would have worked out if they would have tried to do it any other different any other way. It's beautiful at how the Lord uh, uh, the, the the architecture of the Scripture just opens our eyes to, to what happens here. But I do want to look at it here, and um, I, I want to go back and I want to read, because this is, going to be inter this is going to be very important. I want to go back and I want to read Mark 7 again. Mark 7 is going to be very important um, uh, in what I read last week, and it's going to be even more important today, because this is the meat of what I wanted to show you whenever we, we was reading this scripture. But Mark 7, uh, 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 verse number 7, watch what it says. This is Jesus speaking. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition, notice that, the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. He said, it, 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 Jesus said that it, it, it amazes him at how people, people of religion, will actually go to the extra step to reject what God has actually said just to keep their own tradition. Okay? 
Now, you've, 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 you've got to dig into this because this is going to be so important as we get into this. Remember what we said about Pergamos. Pergamos, the very word, per, that, that, that prefix, meaning uh, as opposed to or uh, uh, undesired, or also it, it could mean mixed. And then the, the root of, of, of the word, gamos, is where we get the words like polygamy, monogamy, whenever we're talking about one marriage, polygamy, whenever we're talking about many marriages, and this right here is what we get per gamus, so it is a mixed marriage. It is a mixed marriage. What is it a mixed marriage of? We saw a little bit of it last week whenever he talked about the doctrine of Balaam. He said, remember, we went to the Old Testament, and we saw that what the doctrine of Balaam was, that, that, that Balaam could not curse the people of God so he told Balak, the king, he said, I can't curse them, but what you can do is you can set up stumbling blocks, you can entice them with sin, and through their own sin, they can curse themselves. And that is exactly what the devil wants to do. The devil couldn't win by persecuting the church. So, so, what, so he, he couldn't persecute the church enough, so he decided to join the church. He decided to, to infiltrate himself, integrate himself in with the church. He said, he said, I can't stand on the outside and beat them up on the outside because the more I beat them on the outside, the closer they get. And the closer they get, the stronger they get. He said, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way into the church and I'm going to infiltrate and integrate myself interwoven, just interlock myself in with the church and they'll never know what they're doing. They'll never know who they're actually worshiping. And they'll never understand how their customs and their traditions will actually be honoring me and not honoring the Lord God Almighty. Woo, we're about to get something good. Lord have mercy. I told you, I got cussed out on this, okay? It's going to be great. I promise you're going to love it. So and as we get into this, it's going to be great, I promise you. So understand that as we go through this, we are, we are seeing a whole picture of, of, of marriage. And even what Jesus is writing to them is heavy wedding language. It doesn't seem like it's wedding language, but it really is wedding language. Because since we didn't live in 95 AD, it doesn't register to us that this is wedding language. But he said, I'm addressing a mixed marriage, so I'm going to give you wedding language to understand this, okay? So in order to do this, we have to go back and understand some of that terminology that he was giving us back then. So then, so, so we saw this doctrine of Balaam, that they would actually curse themselves because they would fall for the stumbling blocks. Well then... Um, of course, we, 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 we uh, went in and we, we unveiled just a touch. I told you, I, I, I went back to Genesis 11 and we touched on Nimrod, okay? Just a touch because it talked about the seat of Satan. The seat of Satan was where they worshipped the sun gods. It was, it was, it was or the sun god, I, I should say, because there really, there was only one sun god. And that sun god went all the way back to, the, sun, to, to, to the, the most famous Babylonian god of them all, Baal. We've heard of Baal before, right? Baal worship. So here it was, the seat of Satan. Understand that Pergamos, where it was, it, it, it is, the, um, it is the, the religious center of that day. So we have already seen them uh, address the economic center, We've already seen them address the commercial or the political center. Now he is addressing the religious center. This is where all of these pagan religions love to just come together as one. So that's why he, he, he's using this language to say, you think that you're worshiping true Christianity, but there's something there that's mixed with something there that, 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 that you may not even understand. So he's showing us this little touch, and we're going to touch on it today, but it's, it's unbelievable at how much Nimrod and Baal worship still exist today, okay? Even today. So as we get into this, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to see just, just more of it come through. So what he's showing is what it, what it means to really commit spiritual fornication. What it means to say that I'm serving the Lord, but I don't want to be too devout, I don't want to be too sold out. So every now and then, just like your lover who would step out on you and go to some other lover 
He said, every now and then, you're going to step out on, instead of being a true, dedicated lover of God, you'll step out every now and then and commit fornication with the world. So therefore, you're, 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 you're mixing the pleasures and what is acceptable of this world with what is truly acceptable only to my standard. So, so it's, it's, it's a mix. It's pulling in this spiritual fornication. It's, 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 it's a mix of what's going on. And then I left you with that scripture in 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Now, I want to go back and I, and I want to read here, and we'll actually just read all, all the verses, but I want to start really digging in to verse 15 because that's where we, where we left off from last week. But let's start in verse number 12 here. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Notice that's the title that Jesus gives himself. The, the, the one who has the sharp sword with two edges. We know what that sharp sword is. Remember what it was? The word of God. The double-edged sword. It cuts both going and coming. Watch. And then 13. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days where an Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. In verse 14, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit, what? Fornication. There we go again. Spiritual fornication. Although in that term, Old Testament, it was actual physical fornication okay but now watch 15 so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which thing I hate now isn't that interesting that he talks again this is the second time that Jesus has mentioned the doctrine or the Nicolaitans and he said what they teach their doctrine he said I hate now, he don't hate the Nicolaitans, but he despises what the Nicolaitans teach. If you remember, we first heard about this in Ephesus. The church that he wrote to Ephesus, he talked about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Well, who are the Nicolaitans? There's a lot of debate about who these folks are. But the, 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 the one that makes the most sense, I believe, especially in this context, is remember in Acts chapter 6, they were talking about the first deacons of the church of Jerusalem. One of the deacons, his name was Nicholas, okay? Nicholas started off as a firm, true preacher and deacon of the gospel, okay? But along as he went, Nicholas, he became very relaxed in how he taught. Very relaxed in what he preached on. He didn't, he didn't really preach on sin. He, he, he didn't really, uh, 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 really open up the scriptures. It was more along the lines of, you're going to love it. It's more along the lines of, let me just make you feel good. Let me, just, let me just hype you up, give you a whole lot of hot air, and let me make you feel good, okay? And as that doctrine started to integrate, he had a lot of followers. You can imagine that a man that made you feel good would have a lot of followers that he would that he would he would you know because watch he's under the 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 guise of being somebody who really teaches the word of God so he teaches the word of God and he makes me feel good oh man I mean you, you gotta, gotta, gotta get on board with this well the the Nicolaitans as they started to water down the true doctrine and theology of the gospel okay as they did that then guess what happened the people also became very relaxed. The people became very accepting of all forms of sin. And, and because of that, they started to be very easily married with the customs of this world. Does that sound like anything you've heard before? Does that sound like anything that would be happening here in 2022? I mean, I can show you all kinds of churches. I can walk into a church today and, 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 and I can look at their music I can, I, I can just walk into the church and look, look at the music. I, I, didn't, I don't have to hear the first word the preacher preaches. All i got to do is walk in, see, see what kind of lighting they have in the building, okay? See, see what, what type of, of, 
um, ornaments that they have around. What, what, what type of, of and not even, you know, nothing wrong with technology. We love technology, of course. But I can just start to see the, the, the way that they would craft their service. And I can tell you immediately what type of doctrine is being taught at that church. Immediately. Ain't even heard, heard the preacher make the first remark. You say, well, Ron, that's awful judgmental. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, I dare you. Prove me wrong one time and, and I will show you each and every time and what happens. Well, that's exactly what happens. He, he, he was preaching, he was preaching and teaching a doctrine and establishing a church that was much more uh, um, palatable to, to the world. That they could digest it off, they, they, could, they could easily digest it. Let me tell you something. Jesus is complex, okay? He's, a, he's, he's simple enough that a child can understand. That's salvation. But after you get saved, honey, it is a complex walk that takes discipline to walk in His footsteps. And if you're going to know something about His Word, and you're going to know something about His Gospel, and you're going to, to, to line your life up with this word right here, it's going to be more than something that is palatable to this world. Okay? You, I, I mean, there's, there's no way around it. So whenever we start to see this happen, these is what I really believe is what, what they said, the Nicolaitans. Well, now this is even better. Nicolaitans, it means literally Nicolai, Nicolai, or Nico and Laeta, it means to conquer Conquer, that's where we get Nike from, to conquer, okay? It means to conquer, and then Laetai, it means to conquer the Laetai. What's the Laetai? The Laetai are the people. It means to conquer the people. So how do you conquer the people? Well, what's interesting about these, these teachers is that as they begin to, to give this doctrine that was good to their ears, that, that they loved to hear, that made them feel good about it, what they would do is they would establish the, the, the supremacy of the pastor. That, the, that, that, that he, he was untouchable. He could, not be, he could not be argued against. He could not be approached. He was, he was untouchable. So therefore, he was a ruler over the people. Instead of being what, what the pastor is designed to be as a, as a under-shepherd, as a leader... As a, as, as a director, instead, he was more of a dictator. Well, guess what this was? This was the early stage of what would become the papacy in Rome. That, that the popes that would follow, this is what it comes from. He says, I see how, how this is working. I see how this is coming about. It's these Nicolaitans that are showing us that, that, that yeah, we're going to give you something at first that's going to make you feel good, but then we're going to be untouchable. I have heard all kinds of stories about some of these really, really, really popular uh, 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 pastors, these really, really popular churches. I have heard all kinds of stories how they are un unapproachable. You, 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 you couldn't, you could, there is no way you could go into to their service and want to talk to them. In fact, you would go through a board, and then you would go through another board, and then you would, you would basically pass, I mean, you would have an easier time going through the TSA to get on the airplane than you would to, to go up there and speak to one of these preachers. Okay? Understand that even though that, that, that we live in a country here, and, and even though that we don't subscribe to the Roman Catholic Church, that we have Protestant pastors who are just as bad. Understand this. And, and, and how they teach and what they teach is just as rotten as anything that comes out of Rome. Amen. Amen. So, so, so I understand that, that this doctrine is alive and well. Remember, these, these uh, 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 churches, there's parts of these churches in every single church that has ever existed from the time the church age began until 2022. Okay? So it's still very hot even, even today. So he said this, but he said, I despise it. He said, I despise their, their, their doctrine, their, their dictatorship, their uh, ability just to uh, uh, lay dormant and just let everything go and everything's fine. But now watch, watch. This is, this is, what's, this is what's very, very um, interesting here. Because I told you that there's going to be a doctrine during this time period, during this time period, because if, if we start out at 312 A.D., 
312 A.D., and this will last on up through about 606 A.D. This will be this time period. Now, what has happened during this time period that has set the stage and infiltrated even our churches here in America in 2022? You ready for this? I told you there was 10. He, Jesus told the church of Smyrna it would last 10 days. Okay? That was 10 Roman emperors. All right? All the way from Nero all the way to Diocletian. Okay? So after Diocletian, after he passes, then there's another Roman emperor that comes up. Okay? That Roman emperor is a man, you've probably heard of him, is Constantine the Great. Okay? Constantine seems like it's going to be a whole different ball game. Okay? Because Constantine is, he, 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 had, some, he had, had some Christian background through his, through his ancestors, and he is somebody that is pro-Christian. Somewhat pro-Christian. So what he does is 313, watch, what it, watch very closely, 313 A.D., he gives what it's called the Edict of Toleration. The Edict of Toleration said this, that we are, we're going to tolerate Christians, that we will no longer persecute them like what happened in Smyrna. We, 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 we're, not, we're, not, we're not putting Christians to death for being Christian. Okay, We are going to accept and tolerate Christianity. Now, this is the problem. You have all kinds of religions right now that is busting out in the Roman Empire in 313 A.D. Prominently, you had, of course, you had your, 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 your Roman gods, your Greek gods, all of the mythology stuff that we hear about. But then, even more prominent than that, you had sun worship, bell worship, okay? So, how do I get people, now if, I have, if, if, if I'm the Roman emperor, if I'm Constantine the Great, and I'm the Roman emperor over all of the Roman Empire, how do I get these people who are very against the, the Christian uh, religion, how do I get them to accept the Christian, or to accept the Christian faith. I'll start to blend the two. Okay? Oh, Lord. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is you're no longer going to worship on the Sabbath. That's too, that's too Jewish. Okay? You will not worship on the Sabbath. Now, you will worship on a day of the week that we establish, watch, as Sun Day. You get this? Sun Day. Because what are they worshiping? The sun, okay? So now we're going to worship on Sun Day. All right? But now I have, I have too much going on. I, I've, I've, I've got to somehow how to blend this, all right? So... What they did is in sun worship, all the way back to Nimrod, remember Nimrod, he, 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 was, he was considered a god in his day. He was a great man. I told you, G Genesis 10, Genesis 11, he was considered a great and mighty man. They, they, they loved him, they honored him, he was a great hunter, so therefore he was a great guy, okay? When he died, he was married to a lady, if that's what you want to call her, a woman by the name of, and, I, and I'm going to get her name right here. Watch, watch, I'm going to, I'm, 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 this is a, this name confuses me sometimes. Semiramis, okay? Semiramis. She was married, or he was married to Semiramis. Well, after Nimrod dies, Semiramis says that, that, that Nimrod was a god. So we must honor him as a god. He's going to be honored as the God of the sun. And his name is not going to be Nimrod, but his name is going to be Baal. Meaning, old Babylonian language for God of the sun. Okay? So Baal. Now, why, why, why does this matter to us? Why, why, why does this matter to us? Because we're going to celebrate Nimrod's birth. And since he is the God of the sun,
then it was said, as legend had it, it was said that he was born on the what was what was considered the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice. Okay? Well, the winter solstice, of course, him being God of the sun, the winter solstice at that time in 313 AD, the winter solstice is December the 25th. Okay? Yes, 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 yes. I'm killing Santa Claus. I'm killing the Easter Bunny. I'm shooting them all tonight, okay? You're going to love it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Now, after, now, before he died, before Nimrod died, Samariamus had had a rotten relationship with somebody outside of her marriage, and she was pregnant. She had a son, okay? And of course, this son uh, name is Tammuz, all right? Well, Tammuz, <laughs> you're going to love this too, Tammuz, as he died, he, he died in a warthog attack. Of all things that he could die, he died by a warthog, okay? Well, well, as he died as a, as a young man, then she, Samariamus, is, since she miraculously gave birth to Tammuz after Nimrod died, okay? Since because she had had the relationship before his death, he died, and then poof, she's pregnant. You see this? So she has this miracle child by the name of Tammuz. Well, whenever Tammuz dies from this warthog attack, since he's the promised seed, then Semiramis is considered, considered the goddess of fertility. She's honored in all, she has different names of all of these religions. I mean, you, you can go Greek mythology, Roman mythology, uh, Babylonian, whatever, she has a different name for, for whichever uh, language or country that you want to go into. But Samariamus, whenever she's considered the god of fertility, then what we're going to do is we are going to celebrate the rebirth of Tammuz. Okay? Well, ta since she's the god of fertility, Tammuz will, even though he died in the wintertime, he will reemerge and resurrect in the spring with the harvest because she's the goddess of fertility. Well, they changed her name since she's the goddess of fertility. Guess what? They changed her name from Samariamus to now she's considered Esther, which is what we get the word Easter from. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This was all established, folks, in 325 at the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea is what, is what also determined which 66 books was put in this Bible. Okay? Understand that, that, that at the Council of Nicaea, all of this stuff is, 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 is being put together here but as Constantine the Great is taking what is the pure religion of Christianity and mixing it with this sun worship. I'll even give you one better than that. So whenever they would celebrate the, the, the birth of Nimrod or Baal every December the 25th, guess what each town would do? The town in, in, in these Babylonian-based vil, uh, villages, even throughout the area of, of uh, Pergamos, they would take a Yule log and they would burn the Yule log all throughout the night, and the next morning, whenever the Yule log would go out, it would, it would, it would reemerge and, and, and resurrect as a trimmed tree, creating the, 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 the rebirth of Nimrod. But I'm going to lay it on you. Guess what the Yule log was? The Yule log was a real live infant. That was the Yule log. Yule is Chaldean or Babylonian for infant. So they would burn the infant child throughout the village, and the next day when they would wake up, they would trim the tree and therefore celebrate that everything's resurrected. Do you see the, you see the problem with any of this? Now listen, understand what, why I'm getting at what I'm getting at here. I ain't here to shoot Santa Claus and kill the Easter Bunny, but what I am here to tell you 
is that we understand why we celebrate what we celebrate. But what we don't understand is how this stuff was infiltrated into what we do. Because the one thing that we do know for sure is that Jesus definitely was not born on December 25th. Because shepherds were watching their flock by night and there ain't a shepherd anywhere that's going to watch their flock by night in the months of November, December, or January. It's too cold. Okay? So understand that we know, we know that for sure he was not born at that time. Okay? But understand that, that that's how they were able to, to integrate this old Babylonian sun worship in with our Christian doctrine. Now, this is what's, this is what's tricky about it. Whenever this first happened, around 325 A.D., there was a hardcore group of Christians that rejected it, that said, they, we will not have any of this, we will not do this, we will not celebrate this, because they understood how pagan that it was. But hold on. Guess what happens? As the years go by, people get a little bit more tolerable. They tolerate a little bit more. People, people stop talking about it as much. And as generations fade, the opposition fades. What are, they, what are they wanting to do right now? Little by little, as each generation becomes a little more liberal, as each generation becomes a little more tolerable, as each generation becomes a little more and a little more, then I'm going to tell you something. We should be scared if, if, if time tarries and Jesus does not return within the next... I'm expecting Him tonight, but if He does not... What I'm afraid of is as we go down the road, a hundred years from now, you won't even be able to recognize our form of worship right now. Do you see this? And it's because, it's because what I tolerate, Mike, in my generation, Ezra's generation will fully accept. What you tolerate, the ones behind us will fully embrace. It's, 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 that's, what, that's, that's what we're talking about Sunday. It's not enough just to say, well, I don't believe that. That's good that you don't believe that. But you're tolerating it. And what you tolerate, what you tolerate will fester eventually. That's why you can get a splinter in your finger. And if you don't get that splinter out, eventually it will come to a head. It will come to the top. What's down in there will come to the top sooner or later. Now this ain't popular. This ain't popular and people don't like it, but honey, it is the truth of what it is. This is where we're at. So, so this is, you, you, you say, Ryan, why, why are we conservative? Why, why do we hold to such strong conservative values? Because if we don't hold to it, then they will literally snatch it from out from underneath us and we will not be able to recognize who we're even worshiping 100 years from now. 20 years from now, I'm talking about. That's how, that, that, that's how desperate this is. So as we went, this whole thing, it, 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 it became more and more and more. And by the way, the reason that, that Esther is the goddess of fertility, guess what they celebrated because of fertility? Rabbits and eggs. I've never, I've never seen a rabbit lay an egg, but I'm just trying to tell you, they celebrated rabbits and eggs, okay? Because they were symbols of fertility, okay? Just want to throw it out there. Just, it's, it's, just, it's good. But watch. Watch what the answer was. Remember what G... Now, if you're going to be the overcomer, if you're going to be the overcomer, he told you how he was going to overcome this. The only way that you're going to overcome this is you're going to have to go back to the real doctrine of the Scripture... And he is the one that holds the two-edged sword. So it's going to be the true doctrine of the Scripture that's going to slice right down through all the traditions of men and show you what's the real Bible versus what's the traditions. You see this? That's why he said if you're going to overcome this, then you're going to have to understand this word right here. If you're going to conquer the elements of Pergamos that's in your church, your home, your family, society, if you're going to be able to overcome that, it is only going to be by the real true word of God that's going to divide it right down the middle and say, this is the bad mess, we ain't dealing with this. Eat the chicken and leave the bones. Okay? That's, that's the point. So you have to cut it, and it, and it, cuts, so, it cuts so deep that it divides the marrow. 
You see what I'm saying? It divides the spirit from the soul. I don't even know how deep that is. But that's how deep it goes. That's how deep it goes. That's the power of God's word. But now hold on, hold on, hold on. Watch what it says here. Watch what it says here. It's because I love this. Lord have mercy, I'm going to run. Watch, watch what 16 says. Repent, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the what? Sword of my mouth. Now hold on, hold on, hold on. You can either use the sword, you can either use the sword to divide the bad from the good, or I'm going to come with the sword and I'm going to use it against you. Either way, the sword's going to be used. The word is going to be used. You see this? Now, keep on reading, keep on reading. Verse, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the what? Hidden manna. And will give him a what? White stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Now, Lord, have mercy. Watch this right here. First of all, he says, I'm giving you hidden manna. This is the problem with hidden manna. You remember back whenever the manna fell? They were not allowed to hide the manna. Remember that? If they tried to save the manna for the next day, what would happen? They'd wake up and it would be what? It'd be rotten. They couldn't eat it. But he says, if you, if you, will, if you will do this, if you will overcome this, if you will use the word of God, he said, I'm going to give you manna to eat that you didn't even know about. He said, I've got some manna hid away that whenever nothing else is going to feed you, he said, I'm going to give you something that's going to, that's going to feed you real good. I'm going to give you something, because what Jesus is the what? Jesus is the bread of life. He says, I'm going to give you, if nothing else, if nothing else, honey, you can feast upon the bread of my word. What is the bread of my word? That's the sword that you're using to divide it. He said, I'm going to give you stuff that you didn't even know it because why? That's the beauty of the scriptures. If you'll take his scriptures and use it to divide, he said there's treasures in this book right here that you won't even know is in there because it's hid away. He said, but I'm going to reveal it to you and it's going to, oh my Lord, it's going to fill you up but nothing else is going to fill you up. That's the kind of stuff that I want to dig into. The treasures of his word that absolutely blows my mind every day. The people say, Ryan, how, what, 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 what is it that you, that you like so much about the Word of God? The Word of God is so deep. If you will dig into it, if you will just dig into it and just, I mean, just take one scripture, one verse, and just start chasing that verse throughout the Word of God. Just what we do right here on, on, on Teaching Tuesdays. You'll start to find hidden stuff in there that you had no idea even existed. The, 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 the depths of his word there. He said, if you'll take it and you'll overcome it, you, in other words, you won't just sub subscribe to somebody's tradition. You won't take somebody, don't even take my word for it. Dig in it for yourself. And if you will get into the, to God's word, he said, there's going to be hidden manna in there that you didn't even know existed because that's how good it is. But then he says this. He says, I'm going to give you a white stone. Whew. White stone. What is this? This is the church of what? Pergamos. What does Pergamos mean again? Mixed marriage. He says, but I'm the ones that overcome this, I'm going to give you a white stone. The white stone of that day had, had several different meanings. Understand that under Roman law, now here in America, it may not seem like it, but here in America, we are innocent until proven guilty, right? In that day and time, you were guilty until proven innocent, okay? So, but what happened is if you were, 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 were caught in, a, in, in, a, in, in any kind of type of way to where they accused you of a crime, they would take you and they would brand your wrist with a, with, with, with a mark that what that would mean is that, that means that you are a convicted man. That means that you are a marked man. You're a convicted man. You, you're, you're saying, I'm innocent. I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't do it. I wasn't guilty of anything. But you still had the mark of somebody that was guilty. However, whenever they went through the trial, and then it, uh, both sides were heard, 
Because remember, a lot of our judicial court system came from the Roman Empire, okay? So therefore, they said, whenever we, we, we took you through due process and we saw that you were truly innocent, but the problem is, you still had the mark. So therefore, I'm walking around, I'm a free man, I'm walking around, I'm an innocent man, but I still have the mark of a guilty man. How am I going to be innocent? It would give you a white stone. And you would put the white stone around your neck, and if anybody saw your mark and they started pointing at you and said, oh no, he's a guilty man, he's a guilty man, you would pull up your white stone and you would say, oh, no, 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 the white stone says that I'm innocent. The issue is, is that I'm walking around every day with the mark of sin on my life. And even though I've been saved, even though I am no longer a sinner, when they look at me, they say, he still has the mark of sin. He's still a sinful man. How can we do it? Jesus says, I have given you a white stone, so therefore you have been proven innocent, and therefore you can walk before the judge of all judges, and you can say, Lord, I am accepted in your presence because I have the blood on my soul. I have the white stone. Hallelujah. All right. Well, that, 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 that wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. The other thing is that the white stone was also the highest level of friendship. The highest level of, of friendship. Do you realize that whenever Jesus, remember the scripture when Jesus is hanging on the cross and then the earth quaked and then the veil in the temple was rent and then it said that the rocks, the rocks, Remember that? We're rent. Remember that? That means every single rock on this earth has a crack in it. Every rock. Every rock. Okay? Scientists, geologists will tell you this. You can take the chisel and you can hit the outside of that rock and that rock will split wherever that crack is. And therefore, watch, whatever one side of that rock is, it is unique to only the matching side. Okay? So it is the highest level of friendship, meaning this. Let's say you go away for 20 years from now, and you are unrecognizable to me. I am unrecognizable to you. But before you left, me and you were friends, so we took that split stone, and I gave my half of that stone to you and I have the other half to me, okay? And you come back around to me, and I don't recognize, is, is that you over there? Is that you? And you say, yeah. And you reach in your pocket, and you pull out the other half of that stone. So whenever I put my half to your half, it matches perfectly. Woo! So now, this was the original friendship necklace. You see this right here? My, my half matches your half. What did he say? He's saying that I am the one that has given you the white stone. Meaning I have the other half to the white stone. Meaning that whenever you come in front of me, I may look different from what you remember. You may not know what, what it was, honey, but I'm the one that saved your soul. I have the other half to the white stone that's only going to match your half to the white stone. When we put this together, honey, we know that we were meant to be we're friends just like we were. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. He's the one that saved us. He's the one that loved us. Hallelujah. The stone he's given you. Okay. But hold on. Hold on. That, 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 that wasn't good enough either. How much time I got? I got enough time. That wasn't good enough either. No, 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 no. No. So the white stone also meant RSVP. What is this? This is the church of Pergamos. The mixed marriage. This is the RSVP. The Respondo Sevu Play. Okay? What does that mean? That means that whenever I was having a wedding, now remember the, the Jewish, what is this? Marriage? Whenever I was having the wedding, I would send out the wedding invitations. And the wedding invitations would be in the form of a white stone. 
So, but see, the weddings of that day was different. They're not like what they are today. The weddings of them, they would get, they would get espoused or betrothed to one another. And then after they got betrothed or espoused, the groom would go away. The groom would go away for an unknown period of time. We have no idea. We, we, we know there's going to be a wedding, but we have no idea when the wedding is going to take place. No idea. He said, he said I, 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 I'm, going to, uh, I, I'm, I'm engaged to you, but what would happen is that the groom would then start going back to his place and he'd start working. He'd start working on the arrangements of the wedding. He'd start building the family house. And he would not come and get the bride until everything had been settled. But then, when he was ready to get the bride, when he was ready to get the bride, he would set out and there would be that great wedding procession. And he would get a bunch of his groomsmen, a bunch of his men, and the best man would be carrying the trumpet. And the best man, and they would go just outside. He wouldn't go in to the house to get the bride. He would come and stand right out in the outer court of the house. And the best man would sound the trumpet, and that would be echoing throughout the village. Because this thing was a loud trumpet, okay? And everybody in the village that heard the trumpet sounding would know that the wedding is getting ready to take place. So then, watch, they would all come out and the only and then what, what would happen? The groom would swoop. I'm getting chills on top of chills. Lord have mercy. The groom would scoop up the bride and then he would take away the bride and guess what would happen? They would have a seven day feast. Can I tell you that? A seven day feast. Can I tell you what's going to happen? And the only ones that were invited to the wedding were the ones that had the white stone. What I'm trying to tell you is that there's coming a time when our bridegroom is coming for us. And he's not coming all the way to the earth, but he's standing just outside the outer court. And the best man, I believe his name's Gabriel, is going to step out and he's going to blow the trumpet. And whenever he blows the trumpet, he's swooping away the bride. And when he swoops away the bride, the only ones that are coming are the ones that have overcome, and those are the ones that he's given the white stone to. And when, honey, when we get there, it ain't going to be a seven-day celebration. It's going to be a seven-year celebration. And we will be there and sitting there at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. He said that I have given you a white stone for those who have overcome. You've overcome. You, you've, you, you've took the Word of God. You've adhered to the principles and the doctrine of the true Word of God. He said you've overcome. The mixed marriage didn't get you. The, the, the worldly principles. Can I tell you there's a lot of people messed up in this world today. They are, their, 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 their doctrine is so messed up because they don't understand that they have grasped on to Babylonian roots of sun worship that is absolutely destroying, destroying the true Christian doctrines. That's why they want so badly, so badly to get rid of that word right there. Because without that word right there, we have no way to divide it. We have no way to cut it. But can I tell you something? They tried to burn them all up, and, they st and the Word of God still survived. Amen. They tried to rip them all up, Amen. and the Word of God still survived. Amen. The Word of He said, my Word is forever settled in heaven. It cannot be touched. It cannot be hurt. It's here. And to the overcomer, to the overcomer, the ones that have divided the Word of God, the true Word of God, can I tell you something? He's got you a white stone. Amen. Woo! Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day that you've blessed us with. Lord, this wonderful word that you've given us. God, I ask you right now that you'll touch, that you'll bless. Lord, you'll speak to us individually. Lord, you'll, Lord, just move about this place. 
Lord, if there's someone that's lost here today, someone that doesn't have that sweet promise, that sweet, sweet promise of salvation, God, I ask that you would convict them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, touch them. Oh, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Show us exactly what to do and how to do it. Lord, speak to our hearts right now. Oh, in Jesus' name I do pray. In Jesus' name I do pray. Oh, yes. Let's all stand to our feet here. Can we just gather around the altar tonight? Just pray. Nothing else. Just come thanking for the white stone. Thank Him for the precious blood that's on our soul. Thank Him for the promise that we have. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for this church. Pray for our Bible school coming up next week. Let's ask Him for souls. Many souls for our labor. Oh, yes.